Hi guys, how are you going? It's Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel and as always, Autodidactic means to be self-educated and believe me guys, you want to be self-educated because you do not want to be learning what they are trying to teach you. So this is um, uh, part two to my Japan video and this one is um, all about the megalith, <laughs> megaliths in Japan. Um, and as you can see here, this is a pretty cool picture. Look at all this um, <laughs> crisscross carving. God knows what that is. Um, caves in solid rock. So yes, stay around, guys. Um, carving megaliths, carving into solid rock, um, underground temples, lots of stuff. Stay tuned. Okay, welcome back guys. Uh, today we are in Japan and we're looking at the megalithic structures and here we have a pile of very big rocks. Um, these obviously look like they've been stacked up, uh, made, and there's a, this is um, actually a tomb. There's an uh, underground sort of what they call a tomb underneath this. Um, but yeah, some very big rocks. Uh, I believe this is the entrance to that tomb. I'm not 100% sure, so don't shoot me down if I'm wrong. But um, yeah, as you can see, this is all carved rock down to the ground, underground basements with these massive, massive stones on top. And this is all in Japan, guys. Look at this. <clears throat> um, this looks uh, it looks made, machined. Um, I don't know what it looks like. Um, <laughs> doesn't look natural, does it? I like look at that edge up there, and we've got these great things here, like lines, um, it looks like they've been scooped out a bit, but um, it just looks like it's been, looks like a dollop of molten rock, and you can see how big it is with the people here. Oh, okay, that one didn't work. <laughs> uh, this, yeah, it is, I don't, I don't know what this is, this is... There's obviously a stream or something going up here. There's a massive rock with something underneath it. And then we've got this weird, weird carved. Um, I don't even know what that is. Oh, I've got nothing, guys. But that's, that's uh, pretty interesting. And, of course, Japan has a star fort. Nice, nice star fort. Look at that one. It's a very... Very beautiful, very symmetrical star fort. Got the arrow pointing down here. And as you can see, it's completely built up around this star fort. There's people living everywhere. I'm not sure exactly what's in the middle here, but it looks like there's houses. Probably expensive houses with water views. Um, here's another shot of that. And as you can see, you know, it's all man made, these are all brick walls. Man-made waterways, you know, it's all, you know, it's like an island they've made. You can see the bridge across, bridge across from the mainland, and it's just like, wow. And it does have a wall around it as well on the inside, as you can see. So, yeah, <clears throat> how's that for a star for it? Now, look at this. This is a solid rock that has just had the inside of it taken out. Um, <laughs> there's not much you can say about that. I, mean, I don't. I have no idea what what the purpose of this was for. Um, but yeah, this is in the forest of Japan. <laughs> this rock wall. Um, whoops. So oh, we've gone forward. Whoops. Um. Okay. So this wall. It's very, very up and down, very flat. But look at this. What's this? That looks like a massive, massive stone of granite that would weigh tons and tons, and it's just been sat there. And this one as well has been put in to fill the gap in. And they're pretty, you know, they're pretty precise. That's not a bad job. This guy thinks it's all right. 
Um, man, so who built all this stuff, guys? And what was it for? Now look at this. See all the triangles pointing in, and like, I mean, it just uh, again, what is this possibly for? You know, just lines across this rock, carved out and sectioned out. Um, you know, it looks like a staple line or like a, you know, that paper that you get that's uh, pre-cut to, to rip. But yeah, stone in Japan, the forest of Japan, guys. This again, all from Japan, all of these megaliths. And look at this, you can see that, that there's like a carved out sort of doorway here. And this reminds me of, uh, there's a, a doorway, <coughs> excuse me, a doorway in South America called uh, um, uh, Amaru, Maru, I'm pretty sure it's called. Um, it, it's a bit more pronounced than this one. It's, it's a sort of squarish doorway, but look at, I mean, you know, that's, that's definitely been carved out. Okay, um, I'm not sure what to say about this. I have no idea what this is going on over here, but it looks to be solid rock that's been carved out into these squares. I don't know why, and as you can see, this is just a massive solid piece of rock stone, and they've just carved little houses and rooms and stuff into it, and up here as well. So what was going on in Japan? Look at this one. Again, as you can see, it's a massive, you know, boulder. Um, even the edges have been sort of smoothed off and shined up. But look at this work. They've just cut it out. Perfect right angle sections. Um, you know, we're told this is all done with, you know, copper tools, guys, and rope. <laughs> you know, um, false history. Uh, look at this. This looks like it's fallen from a height and cracked in half. It looks like some kind of roof or something. Um, it is actually quite a big structure. It's um, I can't remember. I did look it up, but it's um, it is it is very sizable <coughs> structure, even though it looks like it's not that big in this picture. Um, but yeah, look at the precision work. That's a solid block of granite. And you gotta understand, like with granite, you know, and this was a huge block. When they're cutting them out, if they make one mistake and it cracks like this when it fell. They've got to start again. So all this stuff, you know, especially like things like statues, you know, you've really got to start thinking, guys. It, you know, one one mistake and the whole thing's gone. This is a part of the emperor's palace. Just look at that wall, look at that curve. That's a perfect 90 degree on each side. You can see up in here, 90 degree angle and 90 degree angles. And just look at the stonework. Oops. Just look at that stonework. And see how they use the long bricks here? It's almost like it's holding these sort of walls together. Um, you know, the architecture back then seems to have been built so um, it could withstand things like, you know, <laughs> earthquakes and deluges and stuff. Here's another one. Look at this. It's fully carved out rock face into, you know, like little hobbit holes. I, mean, I don't know. I have no idea what was going on there. Maybe they're really quite big inside and they were houses. I don't know. Um, but into the solid rock, guys. You know, with copper tools and rope and samurai swords. <laughs> I have this. Look at this carving here. Um, look at that. That is actually Sanskrit text. Sanskrit from India. And it's carved into stone in Japan. So what is it doing there? Well, I would say that all human civilization, all our current societies and cultures have come from a root culture. Um, at some point it's been usurped, taken over. Um, and so now we have this fractionalized, you know, society where everyone's against each other, you know, survival of the fittest and all this kind of crap. Uh, but, but the old world was much different. Everyone was sharing their knowledge. 
uh, this is a sunken um, <clears throat> um, rock. <laughs> you can, this is a temple. This is just a, a view, so you can see you're looking down into it. Okay, and this is a carved rock. You can see it's got this carved bit here, and for some reason it's got a big rope around it. Um, now this is a drawing from the past. You can see it used to have this massive pyramid thing coming out from the side, and it was nicely carved. But also look, there's no, there's, there's a mountain to the back, but there's nothing around the front of it. Now there's a little shrine at the moment. There's a temple in the front of it, but I know it looks a lot more you know, lower in the ground today and more encased by this rock because, you know, there's nothing there on the side there. Um, so what's happened? This is it. So you can see it's completely surrounded now by high rock. But in those pictures, that rock wasn't there. The back one was. Here's that little shrine. Might be the same one. And here's a rock. And look at the carving there. Um, this is some kind of, you know, ceremonial rope. Oh, I thought we had another pitch there. Okay, um, look at, yeah, again, whoops. Look at this carving. I mean, it, 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 look, it reminds me of something to do with metallurgy, you know, melting metals or melting something and having them run off um, into different pots. You know, if these were different levels, you could, you could sort of smelt uh, and, you know, break up sort of alloys and stuff and smell, you know, one metal there. I don't know. That's just the thought that comes to my head, but who knows what this is for. But again, look at the carving. Solid rock. And they didn't seem to have any trouble doing this stuff. Okay, now oh, that's the last picture. So, yeah, guys, ancient megalithic technology in Japan. Who was building this and how were they building it and what was it all for? You know, we're told again that you know when when Japan was founded, found um, it was a feudal society. You know, uh, shoguns, samurais, geishas, and they're all living in wooden huts with rice paper walls. But as you can see, uh, the facts are actually quite different from the narrative we're given. Um, you know, this this is this is amazing stonework. I, I, I you know I would challenge any anyone today to be able to build this, to be able to replicate this in solid rock. Like seriously, that's just pretty, pretty good. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me, and this is Yonaguni, guys, well it's actually called the, the, uh, the Temple of Yonaguni or the Yonaguni structure. Uh, Yonaguni is actually a, an island, it's part of Japan, and as you can see, look at this, this is it's completely underwater, um, and this is just carved you know, car passageway with stairs. This is um, a, like a computer rendition of the actual um, monument, they're calling it. You know, there's a little gate down here, main terraces, there's steps up, there's a triangular pool, uh, it's like uh, representations of turtles, terraces. But look at this, this is basically a massive megalithic outcrop that's been completely carved into something. Uh, the purpose we are not sure of. This, I've seen this picture a lot and I just put in here to say that um, a lot of people are putting these pictures out saying it's part of Yonaguni. I'm pretty sure that's a picture from South America. That's a pyramid from South America being photoshopped in because I've never ever seen um, a pyramid of any kind um, down near the Yonaguni uh, monument. So so these pyramids, and they're called Yonaguni, they are probably uh, fake. As far as I can tell, that there's no pyramids down there, so that's fake. <clears throat> um, this is some divers just showing one of the parts, and as you can see, completely right angle, you know, cut stone into steps, and up here as well. I mean, this is not natural, guys, and as you can see, it's completely under the water. Now they tell us with Yonaguni it's been underwater for uh, about 11 to 12,000 years, 11,500 to 12,000 years. Uh, it's based mainly on um, animal like uh, mollusks and stuff that they've found growing on the monument. And they, can, and they date it back, carbon dating that. So I mean, not sure how, how accurate that is, carbon dating. But... Um, you know, there's a lot of sunken cities, guys. There's 
sunken cities all around um, India, Pakistan, all throughout the Mediterranean. So the sea levels have risen significantly at some point. Uh, we just don't know when that was. Um, obviously, there's a lot of talk about it being, you know, the sort of 12,500 year point back. And that may be true, you know, we may, we may have had many cataclysms or, you know, a few since then. Uh, but yeah, this is basically underwater. And as you can see, it's completely, completely carved. Um, this is one of the turtles. Um, you can see there's a bit of face. This is like the, uh, the flipper. I couldn't find any sort of air, you know, I was going to say aerial, but you know, above views. Um, but you can see that, you know, the, the stonework that's going on here. And look how crisp it is and how sharp the angles are after being underwater for, you know, thousands of years, probably. Um, okay, now I think that's it for you on a Goonie. So um, now I just want to show you a quick video um, yeah, of the topography of Japan and where Yonaguni is just to give you a bit more information, a bit more of a perspective of how Japan sort of plays out in the whole sort of Tartarian uh, old world scenario. All right. Okay, guys, so here we are on Google Earth and, <coughs> excuse me, I just wanted to show you this is Japan, obviously, and... Um, just wanted to show you how it's sitting on. Like, look at this massive piece of, you know, raised land that it's sitting on, this big sort of peninsula thing. Um, so a lot of this could have been above water, especially see this sort of line along here. It doesn't look very deep. And if we go down here, this is where Yonaguni is. Um, where is it? But you can see all these outcrops and how you know, how there could have been a lot more land before, you know, whatever, before the, the sea levels rose. Um, hang on, this, where is Yonaguni? Yonaguni Monument. Okay, so here's Yonaguni. And as you can see, it's just a little island, and the monument's just off the shore here, so we'll see if we, what picture we can get. But sorry if you can hear the dogs next door barking. Um, but yeah, it's just off the shore here. So this is where Yonaguni is. So it's in a place that could easily have been above water not too long ago. And as you can see, look at how it gets really deep down here all of a sudden. Um, so yeah, it's this massive peninsula. Look at it. And then it's deep on both sides. It just drops off to nothing here. So, you know, what's under the water here? There could be so much stuff under here, you know. So yeah, I just found that interesting. So, you know, Yonaguni, they say it went underwater, you know, they're saying 12,000 years ago based on um, uh, like mollusks and things that are that are growing on the rocks that they've found. So this could be evidence, you know, I, I think there's been more than one cataclysm. Um, but yeah, who knows when that when actually when the waters rose. But that's, yeah, that's where Japan sits on this big thing. And that's Taiwan, obviously, you can see it was one big sort of peninsula thing uh, and the other thing I just want to show you is, is China here and Russia okay um, so Japan's very close to what what was Tartaria you know the last stand of Tartaria so um, with the uh, the Inus <coughs> excuse me um, is that what they're called um, with the native people um, there's you know, a lot of um, ties with Tartaria, so they could have easily run, you know, escaped the war or the massacres or whatever and just sort of cruised out here and settled in Japan where they stayed, you know, um, cut off from society pretty much until the 1850s. They were doing trades with um, the Netherlands, <laughs> go figure, from the 1600s, which is way on the other side of the world. Um, but yeah, so that's Japan and Yonaguni is down here. So yeah, it could definitely have been above water not too long ago. So yeah, hope you like this guys. Uh, just a short video today um, on the megaliths of Japan. So please uh, leave me a comment, like, share and subscribe if you like my content. And as always, be autodidactic guys because self-education is the way forward.
All right, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next upload. See you now.